What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball boxing, golf, and more. Better Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus. On your first deposit, bet online when the game starts. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV, covering content and hot topics from A to Z. Sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews, you name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or... Check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku, as well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker.com backslash BS3 Network. You are now tuned to BS3 Network. Show going to Martin, Tennessee. UT Martin talk to Coach Jeremy Shaw here on the Boss Man Show. See him in the big office there, man. How you doing, brother? <laughs> hey, Boss Man, I'm doing great. I appreciate you having me on. This is uh, this is something I was excited about all week. Yes, sir, man. So how's it been going to Martin, man? I'll tell you what, you're very smart, brother. You're from Florida, Tennessee. No taxes. You're a smart man. <laughs> <laughs> so when we when we're gonna move here, so I didn't tell my wife we're gonna be leaving palm trees and beautiful weather for Martin either. Though I told her there was gonna be palm trees here, and so she just <laughs> went roll with it. But no, it's great. Uh, you know, it's been an adjustment. You know, I was at Eastern Florida for 14 years. Uh, to you know, I've been I'm a very loyal guy. I love my job. But when this opportunity came out here, at UT Martin, I'm a Nashville guy, born and raised. Uh, recruited a lot of guys in West Tennessee, and so when I got this opportunity, I mean, it was just it's a true dream come true to to come out here to Martin. Go show me you some blow your mind. I, I'm a Tennessee State guy. Oh, are you? No I, way. I went to school there, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. W- when did you play? F- I know you said you played football there, right? Yes. Yeah. W- w- what years were you there for football? 2000, 2004. All right. Maybe right around the same time. So one of my best friends is Hilton Horn, who played uh, offensive line and, and defensive line at Tennessee State. And I, I, I know remember. I know that name very well. Yeah. It's funny, Coach. Delane Fitzgerald, who's the coach at Southern Utah, was a coordinator there. He talked to me. I remember, I can't have much. I remember planning for you, man. I remember you. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. Well, uh, play against Coach Simpson, too, who's been there forever. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, yeah, I know many of the recruits at Martin will come to Tennessee State and vice versa. So, I, I knew Coach Simpson. I had some, had some good chances about our battles, too. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, the only thing I asked though for me being on your show, the two times we played TSU, you gotta be a you gotta be a Skyhawk fan. <laughs> Every other game you can root for root for the Tennessee State Tigers, but uh, it's funny, coach said, because I actually have a house at, out of White Creek still. And oh there. really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Most people probably don't know this, but Tennessee State's coach, Brian Collins, little Penny's a good friend of mine. Uh, he played at White's Creek. He played high yes. school. So. Yes, yes. Penny's a good friend of mine, too. So, yeah, I, I, I can talk. I'll just tell, I'll tell Coach Ritter I have to be neutral today. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Absolutely. Because both of you are friends. I have to be neutral today. He's so hot, though. I don't Absolutely. want to get anybody bad at me. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. That's great. Yes, man. Yeah, we both got national questions. So let's just be, be beautiful, man. Yes. You know, and I love it because I tell you what, I go, go up there and just hang out on Broadway and uh, get some good barbecue, have some good drinks, man. Just get away from Atlanta sometimes, man. It's just my home, <laughs> away from home, coach. <laughs> Absolutely. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's good to hear. That's really good to hear. You know what, too, man? Like I said, Mark's been good, man. Like, you know, you guys do a good job up there, man. The students love it when they get there, man. So, so how did the AD and the president kind of sell you on it uh, about what they're building, Marty, what Coach Ritter had done while he was there? He got the program winning. So, going to the Super Bowl was winning, not to fully rebuild it, but it was a winning program when you got there. Absolutely. Well, it started with the connections, actually, with Ritter. You know, Ritter's a former uh, junior college head basketball coach from our same league. Yeah, he was at Daytona. We used to have a lot of battles when I was at Eastern and he was at Daytona. And so obviously Ritter is an amazing coach. He had great success here at, at UTM. And so I think the success that he had, you know, coming from the junior college ranks was something very intriguing to, you know, our athletic director, Kurt McGuffin, uh, when he wanted to look for, look for a new head coach. And so that was kind of the initial connection. And then the selling part for me was easy. Again, as I said, I'm a Tennessee guy. Uh, I've recruited players that, that end up going to play at UT Martin. Uh, I, we had a transfer from UT Martin a couple of years ago at Eastern. I've coached guys from right here at Martin Westview High School. Uh, I've coached guys from Haywood County, from Bolivar, from Jackson. I mean, all the all the uh, Union City. So it, the the sale was easy. I mean, this is kind of like a like my second home. Uh, you know, not just in Tennessee, but in West Tennessee with all the players over the years I've recruited. So uh, you know, I would have loved uh, if IUPUI had offered me the job. I mean, it'd be a great opportunity. But to get the job at UT Martin is a true, I mean, this is my UCLA. This is my UCLA. This is not, you know, a mid-major school in OVC to me. This, this is my UCLA. So um, I've just fired up. I probably would have walked from Florida out here to Martin to, <laughs> for this job. So uh, very I happy. I hear that, man. I hear that, Coach. It's, it's great when you get it where, where you know where you want it, man. It's so fun. And, and for you, I'm going to ask you this, man. At what point in your journey you decided you wanted to become a coach? I know – uh, for me, I just wanted to be a radio dude. I didn't want to get into coaching. I didn't want to have the gray hairs and stuff at night. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, so, but at what point did you decide you want to get into coaching, man, and make this your life's path, man? So honestly, mine started pretty early, uh, like like really early. Uh, I was I was always a good player growing up, but all the way back in second grade, I was already running like like recess leagues. I would have different teams drafted. I was trying to keep stats in second grade. I was so upset when a kid would miss school because he was sick and his team would suffer an L because of it. So like, I just love the coaching aspect since I was young. And then uh, at 16 years old, uh, yeah, I was playing AAU basketball. I'd been playing up to at 15 years old. And so at, going into 16, the coach I was coaching for was unfortunately suspended by AAU and was not able to coach the next year. And so like, I'm, I'm a nineties guy, so I'm competitive. Right. And so my, the rival AAU program in our same city wanted me to come play for them. I'm like, no, nah, man, that's not what I do. Like, I'm true to the program I'm at. I know it's the opposite nowadays where everyone just bounces around. I would rather have not played AAU than go play for the rival. Couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. It gave me an opportunity that year. Instead of, uh, this is at 16 years old, I, I decided to try to start my own AAU program and coach that first year at 16. And barely got off the ground. We played like three games that year, but it was the first four into it. Played AAU again the next year at 17, and then 18 as a senior in high school. I went all in on coaching, started my own AAU program called the Mid-State Ballers. We ended up with like, like 62 Division One signees, two guys make to the NBA, and we started at my senior year in high school. So I, mean, I just knew from an early age uh, that that coaching was my passion. That's what I wanted to do. So I just I went all in on that, all in on it. I feel you, man. I totally feel you, brother. I love it, man. I love it. And for you, man, so for now we know we got to have talent on the court, but off the court, man, we're looking for in a young man to become a future Skyhawks. So maybe some Atlanta, Georgia guys, listen to his show, can come up tomorrow and play for a man, Coach Shulman. Let him know, Coach. Well, I'll tell you, we've had some great luck with some Georgia guys now. You know, one of my favorite all-time players is Kareem Bruton from uh, from Snellville, I guess, right on the outside from Shiloh. 
And uh, he's, I mean, he texted me yesterday. He's playing pro ball in Bosnia right now. He just had 14 points, six assists, and five steals yesterday in a big-time pro game. So uh, we've had great luck with Georgia guys. Uh, we, we just want really good people, first and foremost. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if we get them from Georgia, we get them from Martin, we get them from uh, overseas. We get a lot of international guys as well. We just want really good people. Uh, we want guys that love the game uh, and, and that want to be pros. You know, we've had a, the fortune of coaching a lot of guys that moved on to play professional basketball. So we want guys that want to be big time pros and and invest in it. The good thing about here at Martin, there's no distractions. You know, okay. when I was coaching in in Melbourne, I would have this uh, have this talk with with recruits coming in, like, "Hey, come because we want you. You want to be a pro. You want to be the best player you can. This and that." I was like, "Don't come for the palm trees. Don't come for the beach. Don't come for the amazing weather. Don't come for the beautiful girls over there." Like, sure, coach, I'm not coming for those reasons at all. Just for basketball. So sometimes you get the wrong guys in for the wrong reasons. But here at Martin, I mean, this is an unbelievable place for basketball. I mean, the arena, the facilities, the league we're in. The support, the administration is unbelievable. But you know, the town's small. So like nobody's coming here because they want because they think this is Las Vegas. <laughs> no doubt. So, so it's good though. But we're gonna get the right guys in the building, guys that just love the game, want to invest in themselves and want to be pros. And guys that want to be pros come here to UTM. 100 percent man. Yes, I know all about coming to Martin, brother. I know come on 45, <laughs> Joey this way, that way, back out of Martin again. I already know. I don't First hand, well, first hand, yes, absolutely. And, and coach, and the OBC, man, uh, the, hey, the league is still good, man. Uh, the new additions, Coach Walker, the Little Rock, uh, they got Coach Maddox now, Morehead State, you're at UT Martin, our guy Penny at Tennessee State, Coach Pelfrey, my man, Mr. Gerard up there at USI. So the league is deep, man, with talented coaches, man, talented rosters, man. So uh, talk about the OVC. I feel like people have overlooked because Belmont and Murray's gone, but it's still a darn good league with, with talented guys in the league. Oh, it, it is. I mean, it's a great league. Obviously, Moore had won 26 games last year and gave a heck of a scare to Illinois in the first round. I mean, you already hit it with the coaches. I mean, you kind of beat me to the punch, but the coaching at this level is fantastic. There's so much talent at this level. I'll tell you, it's a big physical league. You know, I mean, obviously, you follow this league. You've seen it, but uh, it's physical. I mean, the, the brand of play out here, the type of teams, uh, the type of players that, that get into this league, there's a lot of talent, a lot of physicality. Um, you know, I, I think I, I don't I, I don't know who's going to be great this year because there's so much roster turnover. But, you know, you hit on with Western Illinois, you're definitely going to return the most talent in the league. Uh, it's not a good class already. I mean, they're going to be really, really good. Come off a 21 win season. Obviously, Coach Walker at Little Rock's got that thing rolling. They won 21 games last year. Uh, you know, Penny's had that thing rolling for a while at TSU. Uh, and, of course, my guy Johnny Maddox now back as the head coach now at Moorhead, you know, coming from, uh, you know, assistant Murray and assistant Moorhead before that. Obviously, they're obviously always talented. They're kind of the uh, – they've been kind of the top of the class the last few years. So, I mean, it's going to be a great league, the amount of coaches, the amount of talent. Uh, it's got me juiced up and excited. Like I'm, I'm ready to get to practice right now. I'm ready to start developing. <laughs> uh, we're ready, ready to you know, see what we can do on the court. It was funny. I saw Max uh, Sunday and Saturday graduation and Murray said I was up for graduation. He's like, coming to Moorhead. I see, I see you at Tennessee State, buddy. That's what I told him. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's what yes. I told him. I said, it's a heck of a job from Atlanta. <laughs> Not see number mountain, buddy. I see you at Tennessee yes. State. That's what I told him. He'll no tell you, I that. told him, I'll see you until he stays. That's what I told him to his face. Yeah, no doubt about that. No doubt about that. That's right. Because I was just real witty, but I said, brother, I'll see you until he stays, brother. Yeah. That way you still get to Broadway. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'll see you there, man. That's what I told him. But it's funny, all, it's, it's funny I, I, all you guys are my buddies. Like, Chance, my buddy, what's going on? Like, it's funny. All you guys in the league, man, it's funny to have a league somebody got them cool with. You know what I'm saying? So I, I always have to just go play it cool again. Like, yeah, either way I win. I like both of you. Absolutely. As, hey, I don't know if I'm as cool as some of those other guys, but I'm going to do my best now. Uh, you cool, brother. You cool, man. You a Nashville guy. We got to catch me. You cool, brother. You are cool, yeah. man. And, and, and Coach, let me ask this, buddy. Oh, look at how the portal is now, man. Uh, how will that change how you recruit guys even – even at JUCO level now, how how's how it changed kind of find the right fit when a guy can just get upset or want a new star getting the portal. So talking about how to always kind of recruit your own players every day so they don't 
get the urge to walk out the door on you at the end of the year. Well, I'll tell you what, you're probably going to have to ask me that question again a year from now because my perception might be different. But right now, I mean, what we've done in, in the last 14 years is all bit built around relationships. Yes, sir. And relationships with our players. And so we've had very, very few players ever want to transfer out from Eastern Florida. And even in junior college, where guys could just transfer for I mean, decades without anyone having to sit out. Uh, you know, there's a lot of turnover the junior college routes. We've been very fortunate to have guys that want to come back year after year after year. Um, and so we're going to take that and even amplify that even more here. And, you know, the players we bring, bring in, how we treat them on a daily basis, the relationships. We don't want it to be transactional. We don't want it just to be about wins. We don't want it to be about just basketball. We want it to be about, you know, the relationship with them as a person. And so, our goal, I mean, again, maybe I'm maybe I'm in dream world right now, but my, my goal is to really retain a high number of our guys year after year. And we're going to do that through relationships. We're going to do that through uh, just building that daily with these guys. I, I tell every uh, I tell every player when they come on campus, when we have our first meeting, my number one goal. And this is the honest truth. You ask any player I've ever coached. My number one goal is not winning. It's not championships. Now, I love those things. We've been successful. But my number one goal is to have the best relationship I can with all 18, 17, 16 of our players. And that could be our best player all the way to our lowest walk on. But if I'm not doing a good job, I want my players calling me out on it. It might be a random day in December. And and if I'm not doing a great job building a relationship with our walk on who's redshirting and, you know, doesn't have anything to do with our games and I'm forgetting about him, someone needs to call me on it. But usually I'm the one that calls myself on it because I want to make sure that I'm aware and cognizant of having those relationships with the guys. And so my hope, maybe I'm in dream world and I get it again, you can interview me a year from now and we might have a different discussion, but my goal is to, uh, you know, get the right guys in the building that value, you know, what we believe in value, what we stand for here at UTM, what our coaching staff stands for. And we want to retain and develop year after year after year. I mean, I get it. We may have one or two of our, of our very top guys. You never know what happens, you know, but generally we want to try to retain a whole lot of our guys and, uh, and, and hopefully they see the value here and they see the long-term earning potential by by making themselves uh, have the best chance to make the longest pro career that they possibly can by the development that we'll have here. Again, maybe I'm in dream world. Maybe it looks different a year from now, but that, that's our goal as far as retention. We want to do it a little different than everybody else. And Coach Shulman, you said something so important because that's why I do my show, Coach, because I'm not transactional. I'm yes. about loving you all as people. Like I can see all the guys I named – I support all of you all. If I can, I'm going to come to the game on my off days. I, I care. I want you all to see the put on my show that I do care about you, not just, oh, give me an interview. No, I, I really do care. I want to be part of your program. I want to be the community practices and, walk, and show, know that you know that the boss man show cares about you for real, not just because I want to scoop from you or have you on the show or know who you're going to recruit because some guys are about that. I'm about relationships and showing you guys I'm there for you and not because I, I just want something. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate it. And, and yeah, that comes off right away. It's very genuine. So I, I, I believe you on that. <laughs> no doubt, man. And you know, like you said, Coach, like, I feel like this, man, you know, some of these young men who are transferring up, you know, you cost yourself money going overseas because they look at your numbers. And I tell guys this, if you're not, if you might be on a high major team, gets a little money, but you're not playing much. You're the eighth or ninth guy. Or I should have the number one guy, UT Martin. I'm putting out more film. I can see what I can do, and I can get more paid more because of my stats. Uh, oh, I went to insert high major. Oh, I got eight points a game, played this many minutes. Okay. <laughs> but he's smart. I could have balled out, been player of the year, maybe. Yeah, making more money. So you got to think about the long term. Some of these young men, coach, children don't think about the long game. They think about the short term, immediate success, gratification, and gets a little bit of money. I think about on the back end, what they can make, they stay with you. Hundred percent. First of all, I need you on my staff because I'll tell you, you say that a lot better than I say it. So, <laughs> but, but it's the truth. Um, and you know, there's an old cliche like money doesn't buy happiness, mm -hmm. and and it's true. Like, and I get it. And, and if it's life changing money, listen, you got to go after. It. There's a hundred percent. You got to go after. It. But if it's not life changing money, then the money's not going to buy happiness. If you're getting, I, I don't know, if if you can, if if you're getting seventy five thousand from a school. And you're not going to go play a whole lot or you're unhappy or that coach doesn't care about you or again, it's all transactional, then you're not going to be happy. And 75 grand is great now, but it's especially after taxes because NIL gets taxed. I mean, it's not life changing money. It's just not life changing money. And so 
uh, why not set yourself up to be happy for four years in college uh, or however many years that you got left in college and then set yourself up to be a big time pro and have longevity of having a great pro career rather than again, to your point, just chasing, chasing the, the media gratification. And so that that's what we sell on. And honestly, we've turned down some kids that, you know, visit here, loved it, loved everything we had to talk about. And then they're like, well, I'm going to go on another visit. I want to see if I can get some money somewhere else. Well, listen, man, have fun. That's not us. <laughs> yeah, it's not us. That's 100%. not us. Go, go do the, go do you. That's great. But like, if you want the relationships, you want the development, uh, you want to win games, uh, come here for those reasons. But uh, if you're just chasing instant gratification, chasing that pot of gold, I mean, you're going to have to find somewhere else for that. Well, hundred percent coach. You come ask this man, how will the schedule coming along? I know that's your hardest job out of side of recruiting, scheduling games, having to play those by games, and you know get the right mix for the OVC coming up as well. So, how has that been for trying to schedule games, knowing that hey, you're a new head coach, and people might think, hey, we can beat this guy. Yeah, you know, it's it's not easy. Uh, it's, it's hard to get home games, especially. So, uh, right now we got eleven non-conference games game, and then we have twenty conference games and eleven non-conference. Uh, we have two home games and nine on the road. And, and that's fine. We'll play anyone anywhere. So it's all good. But it's just hard getting a great schedule. And it's hard getting teams to come to our place. Um, but, you know, the, I guess the advantage we have right now is we return basically nobody from last year's roster. And it's a brand new coach who's never coached at the Division One level. So at least people are calling us for games. <laughs> it may not be a home game for us, but people are calling us for games. So. Uh, at least we're not in that situation where people are scared to play. No one's scared to play us right now. So, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take that as a little bit of a chip on the shoulder. So, yes, sir. And, and, you know, what? Uh, and uh, how happy are you looking forward to the summertime here, getting them on campus? Cause I know, uh, which been a new coach, you had to put stuff in. So how much are you going to mix putting in team stuff versus skill development stuff or mix a little bit of both in those four hours you have each week with the guys doing, doing summer school? Absolutely. Hey, great question on that. So for me, I don't know what other coaches do. I don't really care what other coaches do. I just want to do what we do. Uh, we're going to do all skill development. We're going to do no team stuff. And I get it. You know, we got to get a whole new system put in, but we'll we'll worry about that later. Uh, summer, to me, it's all about the players, all about the players. It's about the development. It'll be a weight room. It'll be on the court, you know, during our eight hours. And I mean, it's going to be all development. So we're not going to do any team stuff in the summer. You know, I just want guys to develop. I want them to enjoy it, too. You know, I don't want them thinking, oh, well, I'm coming to summer school. I'm going to be far from home, and I'm coming just to do a bunch of team stuff. Now, we're going to come develop, come develop. So, I mean, that's kind of our niche, you know, just in general is uh, we want to be that program that builds relationships and develops. I mean, we tell every recruit those are the first two pillars that we talk to all of our all of our recruits about. You know, we want to be that that program that develops relationships and develops you on the court. 100%, man. You know what's good also for team building? Because I, I know back in my day there was no such thing as – Summer summer workouts like this. It was yeah. October fifteenth. That was the magic day. <laughs> Absolutely. They could work be where your teammates good at because coach, I feel like this coach, building that rapport in the summertime with help comes a tough night on the road in Little Rock or wherever you went, come pull through together. Cause I feel like you build that callus of build those bonds early to kind of fit it together. October fifteenth. <laughs> <laughs> No, ab absolutely. And, and, and really well. And again, uh, I mean, I'm just so excited to get these guys here again. You know, some coaches love the recruiting part. Uh, I like it. It's fine. You know, I, I like it. There's, there's a sort of level of excitement about recruiting and who you might get and this and that. Uh, I like the coaching part. I like the coaching and the, and the relationship part. So I'm fired up to get our guys here and uh, let, let's, let's start building, start getting better. Let's start developing players. So I'm, I'm fired up for that. And last one for you, brother. Tell me, uh, what's been some cool food spots in Northwest Tennessee that you hit up with the staff, man, as you all try to work hard in the office every day to get this thing going the right way for you guys? Hey, so that's the most surprising thing about Martin. This is like a little foodie place. There's some great, even for a small town, there are some great places here. Uh, there's a restaurant called Crave, which is, I mean, it, it looks like it should be in Hillsborough Village in Nashville. Like, it does not look like it should be in Martin. It is phenomenal. I mean, the food, the uniqueness of the food. Uh, Blake's Barbecue, unbelievable barbecue place, uh, renovated from an old, like, sawmill or something. Like, it is a cool, again, another spot that looks like it should be in, in like, in like Germantown or something. Like, it's phenomenal. Um, you know, both the Mexican restaurants here are fantastic. 
Um, uh, the grind is a burger place. And so I'm actually plant-based with my diet. So I don't eat any meat. And the grind has all these different types of burgers, but every burger you can get, you can substitute with a black bean patty, which is very cool, especially for a, for a you know, smaller town like, like Martin. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting. Oh, and Sammy's, the sandwich shop. Uh, I mean, just, it doesn't look like it should be here in Martin. All these places are so unique. Uh, it, it, I, I can't believe how good the food is out here. That's been the biggest surprise in Martin. And I'm so fired up about that. Man, just make sure you get your work out of here, bro. So you don't, you don't, you don't get you on the back end, buddy. Get Absolutely. I'm, I'm ready for lunch already. All that talk about food, I'm ready for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I make sure get my, mor- my morning and night walks in to make sure I maintain, brother. <laughs> like- <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, so it's a good question on the food part. I'm glad I got to bring that up. No doubt. Well, brother, hey, man, I hope to see you in the live period. I will be at Lake Point in Atlanta. I will be at the Peach Jam. I will be at Rock Hill. So hopefully the little live period I'll see the or I catch you in Nashville. If you're in Nashville between now and then, I still I have a house there still. So I can hang out, go out there in Nashville, enjoy something as well, brother. That'd be great. Anytime you want to have me on the show, I'm available anytime, anytime. I appreciate you, man. I'll get you never offline, man. It was just fun, man. I'm so happy we had you on the show, man. I'll be right up your Skyhawks as well, brother. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I appreciate it. Go Skyhawks, baby. <laughs> yes, sir. BS3 Network. Changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network. Changing the way you watch TV. Covering content and hot topics from A to Z. Sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews. You name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku, as well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker.com backslash BS3 Network. You are now tuned to BS3 Network. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 105.5 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King.